unmute. This is an order for Compline on Monday evening, December 20th, beginning on page 127 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let's take a moment to quiet our hearts and our minds. The Lord Almighty grant us a peaceful night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Let us confess our sins to God. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, forgive us all our offenses and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. May the Almighty God grant us forgiveness of all our sins and the grace and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Turning to page 614, we'll read Psalm 25 together in unison, verses 1 through 14. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame, for the, let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you I have trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right and teaches his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness to those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. For your name's sake, O Lord, forgive my sin, for it is great. Who are they who fear the Lord? He will teach them the way that they should choose. They shall dwell in prosperity, and their offspring shall inherit the land. The Lord is a friend to those who fear him and will show them his covenant. My eyes are ever looking to the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Thanks be to God. Turning over to page 134. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. Keep us, O Lord, as the apple of your eye. Hide us under the shadow of your wings. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Now let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayers and let our cry come to you. 
Let us pray. Be our light in the darkness, O Lord, and in your great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your Son, your only Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Turning over to page 134. O God, your unfailing providence sustains the world we live in and the life we live. Watch over those both night and day who work while others sleep and grant that we may never forget that our common life depends upon each other's toil through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now if everybody would like to unmute and offer up prayers of intercession and thanksgiving. Pray for Frank and Mary tomorrow. <clears throat> for Gordon, for John. Pray for Janine and Luke. For our Holy Cross Church staff and for the Conference Center staff. Amen. Kathy, Doris, Blair, Ada. Thank you for the new families from Afghanistan who are settling in Jacksonville. Bill and Gina. Thankfulness for Jan's safe arrival. Susan and Safe travel for Gray flying in from LA later this week. <coughs> I ask that your Holy Spirit would enfold us all in the Christmas services to your glory. Okay, for Donna. Thanks for all those who worked so hard yesterday to make the church look so beautiful for Christmas. Dear Lord, we offer up these prayers in your holy name. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord. That awake we may watch with Christ and asleep we may rest in peace. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen <clears throat> whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory <laughs> to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us, guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now I off, I'd like to read a, a share a short article that was written by a minister in Gainesville, um, Matthew Woodruff who starts his wonderful article with a quote from Lucius Seneca saying, wherever there is hu a human being, there is an opportunity for kindness. We live in a world where there is violence, pain, trauma, and hatred. There is fear, confusion, and distrust. People blame poor people for being poor, never bothering to understand the conditions that create and perpetuate poverty. Debates rage about immigrants from Latin America, and the refugees from Afghanistan. Some disparage the Black Lives Matter movement. Folks mock or use their words to hurt women, gay and transgendered people, the elderly, youth, the disabled, people of religious faiths different from theirs, and even those who have been victims of violence. Political divides lead to violent encounters where people even lose their lives. Yet during the holiday season, many persons also experience and share love, compassion, a spirit of giving, of togetherness, of sharing, of being thankful. Many of us are appreciative of any holiday celebration that allows us to spend time with friends and family. Don't we owe it to ourselves and to each other as sisters and brothers, as family members in the human race, not to allow the holiday season to be the only reason or the only time why we show some level of caring toward each other. We are all here on the same journey, 
and we all strive to live our lives the best way we know how. It isn't up to us to judge, belittle, or criticize another's choices. How can we, even in small everyday ways, keep sharing love and compassion for each other? Could it be as simple as a, looking a homeless person in the eyes and acknowledging his or her presence, even if you do not have money to share? Could it be by checking in with a friend or a neighbor or a family member or a coworker whom you know has been through a difficult stretch of life to let them know that they matter to you? Could it be by offering a smile to a stranger, a warm word to a child or senior citizen, especially if it is evident that that child or senior seems to have been abandoned in some way emotionally, physically, or both? Could it be by having the ability to listen <clears throat> to the voices of those who might be different from us as they express what the holiday season might mean to them given their very different history and culture. Do we have it in us as members of the same human family all on the same journey to make every day and every moment we interact with each other an endless celebration of the possibilities of our humanity? I believe we do, but more than that, I believe it is required of us. The almighty and merciful Lord, Father and Son, Holy Spirit, bless us and keep us. Amen.